listening to the Marketing Happy Hour podcast, where we discuss career and industry insights with our peers in marketing. We're here to talk about it all, like the ups and downs of working in social media, how to build authentic relationships in the influencer and PR space, managing a nine to five and a side hustle at the same time, how to be productive in your life and career without losing your sanity, and more. Ultimately, we're here to build a community with you because we're all trying to navigate the world of marketing together. Are you ready? Grab your favorite drink and join your hosts, Cassie and Erica, for this week's episode. Welcome back to Marketing Happy Hour. This week, we are so excited for you to hear our conversation with Alyssa Marie Marchino of one of our favorite cookie dough brands, Sweet Lauren's. In this episode, Lauren shares how they've found social media marketing success as a team of only four and gives us an inside look at the strategy behind launching two new products, puff pastry and pizza dough, from conception to reality. She also shares her top tip for each social platform that Sweet Lawrence is currently present on and explains why she thinks we'll be reverting back to still images as the future of social media unfolds. It's such a fun conversation, so grab your favorite drink, a Sweet Lawrence cookie or breakfast biscuit, and let's dive in. Hi, Alyssa. We're so excited to have you on the show. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm um, yes. so excited. I told you guys it's my first podcast, so very excited. Yes, you're going to be great. And we were talking off record. Erica and I are both huge fans of Sweet Lauren's. And so this is going to be such a fun opportunity, not only to learn more about the brand, but just to get to know you and your journey. Uh, but first, we have to ask, what is in your glass Gosh, it is like 12 o'clock, but what's in your <laughs> class now, uh, just kind of early afternoon, or what do you enjoy sipping on on just a regular basis? Yeah, I currently have an iced coffee with um, my new favorite uh, creamer. I'm a sweet coffee girl, so I have this Bridgerton Berries and Cream creamer in it, but I am counting down the minutes to my first Aperol spritz of the week, so <laughs> yes. it's only only a matter of time. <laughs> <laughs> Speak in my language. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Cassie, what do you have in your glass? I I just have water today. I'm super boring, but, um, you know, have to hydrate, but likewise, I am definitely craving an Aperol spritz as I am every single day. (laughs) Um, but hopefully we'll have one of those, uh, later today, uh, for a little Friday cheers. How about you, Erica? What do you have? So fun. I'm just sipping on, I was like, so um, I don't know, hesitant to try this because I don't like energy drinks really. I'm like famous for not liking any energy drink. I've never tried like a monster or a Red Bull, anything (laughs) like that. Um, so when we had Haley, uh, Gorski, a a registered dietitian on the show, she was so kind and she sent us these gorgy energy drinks. Um, this one's in sparkling watermelon crush and it's actually like, it tastes good. I'm like curious to see how I feel afterwards. I know Cassie has tried them and likes them. Uh, so we'll TBD on that, but I feel like maybe I'm going to be a new fan of energy drinks. We'll see. Yeah. We actually did that, did something with them and they are very good. So yeah. 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 I'm a fan. So fun. Okay. Let's dive into the conversation because we want to chat with you about your experience and everything that you're doing with the brand. So Sweet Lauren's, as Cassie mentioned, is one of our absolute favorite brands, but first we want to dive into your background and how you landed in your current role. Could you give us a peek at that? Yeah. So um, I actually went to college for accounting. I really wanted to be an accountant. I don't know why. I don't think there's many people like grow up that say that. But I think I loved the idea of having like a consistent job, consistent schedule. There's always an answer. And then I got to my junior year and was like, I don't want to do this. I don't really know what I want to do. So I took an internship like the I was a college athlete, so I can only do like winter and spring internships. Um, So I took an internship with this floral and event design company. It was one of the only paid ones at the time. It was like 2016. Things were still kind of it was like ten dollars an hour, but that was a lot for me. Um, so I was like, okay, like I went to the city every like three days and we went to all these fun events. And I kind of just had this idea, like, no, I'm not going to be an accountant. I like being out in the field. I like doing fun things. So 
I worked for this floral event design company for two years, went in from events to social, always was a mix between events and social media. Um, I didn't feel like I was being challenged enough at that point. And I just kind of wanted a little bit more, a little something different. And I started working for hippies. It was my first job in the CPG industry. And I was just doing field marketing. Um, I loved it. It was like such a dream job and really kind of is one of those things that is keeping me in the CPG industry because I've just met so many good people and um, I have nothing bad to say about it. But the timing lined up with 2020 and um, yeah, I've been through a few jobs the last couple of years. So I went from hippies to, I think it was like Crave Jerky. I was doing more sales in the field. Um, I really didn't want to let go of field marketing. Although every company I'd worked for, I was trying to always get involved with social, always wanted to you know, have an opinion on what was getting posted and interact. So a couple of jobs later down the line, I started working for a company called Owls Brew. I was running all of their social email, um, helping with website design. And I kind of really just working there gave me the chance to freelance too. I worked for a lot of small companies locally, which kind of gave me more freedom than essentially at Owls Brew, which being in alcohol was a very challenging space too, going from packaged goods, um, which didn't need to be refrigerated to an alcohol that you can't just like place in a box and ship to everyone it has to be purchased. There's just so many rules. And um, at the time I was like, no, I, I'm okay. Like again, next venture, lots of freelancing jobs later. Um, I kind of ended up in field one more time and then was like, no, it's social. I'm social is where I want to be. And that's when I ended up at Sweet Lawrence. I've been here since January of 2023. So a year and a half. Um, and it's been great. Uh, but yeah, definitely it was a long way to get here. And <laughs> I feel like I've been rewarded with such a nice job and such like great teammates. Wow, that's awesome. And I feel like a lot of our listeners can probably relate to that unconventional path, especially going through the, those few years of the pandemic. It's like, you know, you didn't even know what was coming next in your career, honestly, like a lot of us felt that way. And so uh, what do you think that challenging time like really taught you just in terms of like career, being adaptable, like uh, going different ways than you thought you might go? Um, what do you think you learned during that time and have brought into your current role? Yeah, so I actually did end up like graduating with that accounting degree. And like, I feel like during the four years, like, I guess from when the start of the pandemic to like almost now, it's always been like, do I want to go back to that? Do I want to use that stable job? Do I want to sit in the office? Do I want to, you know, have crunch numbers all day and use Excel? Or do I kind of, in my eyes, it was like, do you want to have fun? And like, yeah. although it's been very high risk, high, it's been very high reward. Um, so to me, that's kind of like what kept me going. And always finding like the next thing. I, I've always found myself in the better for you space. I think it's like a testament to being like a college athlete and like who I am, kind of having like a passion for it. Um, but it's just really kind of like you said, adaptability, like knowing that this is what I want to do. So kind of working for a smaller company, working for a bigger company, you know, just doing what I have to do to kind of which ended up landing me here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you look back and you realize that everything happened to get you where you are today. I feel like that's a common theme that a lot of listeners and a lot of our guests on the show have even been through themselves. So I um, always love hearing about that journey, but I want to talk a little bit about your current day-to-day -day as social media and content manager at Sweet Lawrence. What are you doing on the day-to-day? -day? What does your team look like? Yeah. So um, I feel like it's one of those things like you never really realize until you're in it of some of these CPG brands, we like our entire company is 19 people. Um, so our marketing team is four people. It was four with um, people like moving in and out, um, but we're still at four. We have two contractors who I pretty much work directly with. Um, we have a contractor who helps me with influencer management and then a contractor who does some recipe creation and works with Lauren doing some videos. So there's really, we're really, really small. Um, actually, as of this week, I hired a TikTok intern, which we can talk about later. It's been game changing from the start. So um, day to day is a lot of like just content planning, planning for the future. We have so much stuff coming, like we have two new products launching very, very soon, if not already, they're kind of trickling into stores, but we are teasing it on social media still, um, letting people go find it. We have new things coming at all times. Like I think I, I was talking earlier, there's no shortness of new in the Sweet Lawrence world. So it's always just kind of 
what's coming. So a lot of future planning, um, working with, you know, other brands for some giveaways, uh, brand partnerships, but we did start an ambassador program, um, when I did start back in like January. So kind of man helping the influencer manager manage the ambassadors. Is it working, um, working with UGC creators. So a lot of like, definitely not, um, the same every day, but it's been really, it's really cool. Like the whole recipe planning, cause we have all these new products. It's like me on Pinterest. Like, I think this would be really awesome for us with cookie dough. And I think this would be great. So it's really fun. And it's, um, I get to learn a lot from people who I haven't, like, I would never know anything about some of these things that we do with cookie dough. That's so cool. And that's so like fun to work in an environment where you're learning something new every day. Um, before we move on in the conversation, I just have to know with all of the different products that you have, what's your favorite? Hmm. So I, oh, I guess I can say it. I was never like a sweets person. I was always like that comparison when you're like younger, it's like, would you pick a brownie or celery? Like I was like, I pick celery. Like, I just like love that. <laughs> but I really do love our, um, our newer lemon cookie, like so much. Um, but I always have breakfast biscuits in my bag. I travel a lot. So they're really, really a good staple. I'm actually <laughs> newly diagnosed with a whole bunch of allergies too. So I now fit perfectly into our community <laughs> of allergy friendly products, but the new ones are game changing. Um, our two new products are definitely game changing. I haven't got to try some of the new recipes like everyone else has as frequently, but I think they will creep right up to the top very quickly. Oh, yes. I'm so excited. I, uh, love picking up uh, sweet orange just at the grocery store and eating it. And you're right. It's not super sweet. It's like just enough to kind of satisfy that, that sweet tooth. So it's, uh, it's so perfect. Um, I'm curious to know too, you mentioned you only have four team members on the marketing team. How do you all, uh, kind of balance and stay organized uh, with all of these different collaborations and launches and things going on? Any tools or strategies you'd recommend to another small team just looking to kind of stay on track for their goals? Yeah. Um, I think like in, at least in our team, we do one-on-one -on -one meetings every week. Um, I know some teams it's like not that frequent, which I was, oh, I was kind of shocked by, but um, every week I speak with the SVP. I speak with our director. I speak with our shopper manager all the time, just even those are like really little things, but we do cross collab for certain aspects of the job. So I think it's really just like staying up on communication and always having like a really clear line. Um, I think if I know we're going to talk about it, but like one of the things that makes us really successful, I think is like trusting each other is going to get it done no matter what. Um, and that's really a really important thing. Um, everyone's always willing to answer the phone if you call and ask a question. So um yeah, I say teams and just really staying, staying open and being willing to talk to each other. We don't have any like true, you know, platform route, like in Monday, like checking things off a box or really just working together. Yeah. Just simple communication, consistent yeah. talking. Yeah. I, I feel like sometimes we get too fancy with the way that we collaborate and it's like just having consistent conversations and keeping everyone up to date. Uh, we can't undervalue that. So thank you for mentioning that. Yeah. Um, I would love to hear too, any favorite projects, you know, you've kind of teased a couple things you've worked on already, but do you have anything that stands out to you as like your favorite moment, uh, or project or collaboration or campaign that you've worked on so far at Sweet Lawrence? Yeah. Um, I would say like when I came in, it was really like a blank canvas and that like, again, ties back to like them trusting me to kind of really what I feel like is necessary to get things done. Um, but I really loved last year when we launched Pumpkin Spice. We launched it really early. So it was like, I think it was like July 26th. And I, in my head, I'm like, I was always that one, like Starbucks Pumpkin Spice latte is out. Like I'm going to be the first to get it. But I think it like ended up hitting stores in Arizona first and people were like posting it and it was like 115 degrees. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how you were eating a pumpkin spice cookie right now. And then it was just kind of like learning to pivot, like that angle it's like okay so everyone really is going to enjoy this like how do we bring fall bring move fall up it's time like we're we're ready and then our same thing kind of happened with chocolate mint and gingerbread it's like they're here in september which is really pumpkin spice we sold out of our pumpkin spice so quickly it was so hugely successful that it was like okay now we really have to push this chocolate mint like how do we pivot these and make them seem earlier like seasonal now um even though people ask for them all the time they're like i want chocolate mint back i'm like it's june <laughs> 
You don't want that right now, I swear. I would want that right now. That yeah. <laughs> yes. It's so funny. People all the time, they're like, gingerbread now. I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure you want the gingerbread right now? Um, so I think that's like kind of been like one of my favorite products is the seasonal. Um, I really, I've enjoyed kind of, again, recipe development and like picking what influencers to work with for these specific products, especially the breakfast biscuits also overlapped last year when we launched them with the new um, holiday flavors. There was a whole, like where, like I said, there's no, never short of new things coming. So last year we ended up having four new products, which there's three breakfast breakfast biscuit flavors, but it was just a really fun time to like pick things up and like pick recipes and people and just really get the brand out there in a new capacity. Yeah. It's so interesting too, as marketers, I feel like we look at seasonal stuff so differently because we're talking about it in like February and everyone else is like, okay, by the time June hits, everyone's ready for it. But we're like, we literally year round talk yeah. about seasonality. So it's uh it's such an interesting dynamic, but yeah, people love it. And so I feel like if people love it, then it's great. Yeah. I like woke up like last week and I was like, it was like June 1st. I'm like, oh my God, like pumpkin is coming back next month. And like, yeah. there's so much happening this month. And like, wait, I have to like start replanning for pumpkin again. And I was like, it's so crazy because it's I know. Summer, summer just started. Yes, I know. So weird. Such a weird world we live in. Um, yeah. But uh, I want to know too, just with like storytelling, we love talking about that topic on the show here, but how have you been able to successfully tell the story of Sweet Lawrence through content and grow the brand to where it is today? And are there some successful avenues in terms of social and content strategy that you'd say stand out to you on that topic? Yeah. So I think like for our, like the brand story is really based off of Lauren's personal life. Lauren was um, diagnosed with cancer at a young age and then kind of realized there was no, you know, better for you snack. She was like a dessert junkie and was like, I need to make something better. There's a really an open market for this. And she created that product like based off a need in the market. And that is like a really big thing for kind of all of our products. Our team does a really good job of kind of, you know, we're not going to launch something if it's essentially not going to be successful or there's not a need for it. And I'll say that just for like everything that is coming out for, and, you know, in the next, in the near future. But um, something else we do is because we are top 14 allergen free, we, I think a big thing has been working into that niche. Um, like making sure we use like he's an, uh, an influencer, Phil hates gluten. He's been massively successful for us. He really likes our products. So instead of like being really selective with where like we gift, where we, you know, pay influencers has been a really big, important strategy for us because our product really is very niche. Um, I think that has been like super tremendously helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of research that goes into that too. It's a, it's a lot of a lift on the back end, but it does pay off like significantly when you find those right people to talk about the right things and, and talk about those like actual story points of the brand, I think is amazing. Um, so you alluded to it a little bit, um, these two new products that you've been launching. Um, it's pizza dough and puff pastry, right? Yeah. And it's so weird because this was like, obviously it's not really a secret anymore. We did announce it back <laughs> in March, but I feel like if there's just things go viral, things don't. And I'm like, okay, like I'm going to like rehide it for the next month and then yeah. tease it again. And everyone's like, we've been looking for this for five months. I'm like, well, I didn't say it was out back in March. Like, <laughs> it's okay. Um, like you, you couldn't find it. So there's a reason you were not successful, but yeah, we're launching our puff pastry um, in this month in June. And then our pizza crust will kind of be like right at the end of June. And then throughout the summer, it's going to hit many more retailers. Um, it's a little smaller to start. And then kind of come August, it's going to be really nationwide. You'll be able to grab it, but um, yeah, when this is out, Puff Pastry is at Target. So, oh, yeah. so fun. We'll it's be so funny. having such a good retailer to like start in too. It's like, every yeah. girls love Target. Oh my gosh. We're going to have to run over there after this recording, yeah. but 
Um, I want to hear too, like after being primarily in that like cookie breakfast biscuit, like sweet, but you know, breakfasty space for so long, how have you kind of found success entering that new vertical? What are the different strategies that you're using, uh, to talk about these two new products versus, uh, cookies and, and breakfast biscuits? Yeah. So, um, I think I mentioned earlier, we brought in a recipe developer and I feel like at least myself, I learn a lot from him. Um, and Lauren too, like Lauren has created all these recipes herself. Um, so just as someone who wasn't super familiar, I like, of course I could place the cookie dough on a baking sheet and I could open the pack of breakfast biscuits, but this, these two products for me were like a lot more learning. So I'm better informed to kind of inform our consumer being a social media manager. Like I am the kind of like front line of those like little nitpicky questions. So really like little things like learning how to make sure that the consumer knows how to bake this puff pastry and they're successful. So we have so many videos of like tips and tricks and just kind of knowing that this is not going to be as easy as our cookie dough or our breakfast biscuit. We're really trying to kind of prepare so that it's so seamless because um, it is a one of a kind product. It's not frozen. It's in the refrigerator. It's just a one, like you roll it right out. It's ready to eat. Like it's just, um, it's so different. So I think kind of, you know, getting people to move from cookie dough to breakfast biscuits was also challenging because it's obviously not in the same aisle. At least now we're kind of, we're getting closer, but um, it's just the general awareness that we have new products is people are always shocked. It's like, I could post 50 times and someone's going to say, oh my gosh, I didn't know you were launching that. It's like, okay. So just kind of being best prepared um, for all the questions is kind of what we're starting off with now. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really wise thing to do. And uh, leaning in more to like that educational piece, even on like your messaging and social and things like that will be uh, pretty successful there too, I'm assuming. Um, I'm curious to hear like, what is the marketing strategy around launching a new product, whether it's like within that new category or it's a new cookie flavor or something like that? You know, how far in advance are you thinking about it? Uh, what are you planning like teaser wise? Is there any strategy behind it or is it just kind of like we're going to throw everything to the wind and see who who uh, engages with this? Yeah, I'd say it's a little bit of both. Um, you know, a lot of our stuff, we we're not as big as I feel like we seem like we are. So a lot of times like these new products are really rolling out like pretty quickly. So when we're like launching them, of course we get some one-offs and whatnot. So um, we did a photo shoot like two months ago. That's planned, that's in, that's ready for our website. Everything's ready to go. But then other than that, it's like we have lists of influencers who like once there's enough product for us to send out the door, it's going. And they, we've talked to them about it. And that's been the nice part about announcing this back in March is that, the secret, you know, it's such a big secret. People were so shocked because we actually did so well kind of keeping it under wraps that like cookie dough, we tell them there's a new flavor. It's okay if it squeezes out, you know, like it's not that big a deal, but these, everyone knows that they're coming. So I've been able to work with some influencers and be like, hey, we're going to send you this the second week of June and you're able to post whenever because now it's in stores where usually it's like everything's so hidden. Um, but as for like posting on our like Instagram grid, I feel like it's always changing. And, you know, I was kind of doing something last year with cookie dough flavors on using this like phone technique. And like, it's like Lauren's telling us like, you're good to go. You're good to go. And then I was like, I don't know if that's really hitting it, you know? And I think that's the beauty of social media is like, you are able to like adapt and change things. So, um, we have something kind of piped out for when these hit the grid and they're ready, but again, it might change for the next product just because, you know, adapt and learn is such a key thing in social media. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's dive into social media a little bit specifically here. Uh, how do your strategies on different social media platforms differ from one another? And are there things you're doing on one channel that you're not doing on others? Uh, share with us how you approach uh, your strategy there, if you don't mind. Yeah. So, um, as of, like up until, I guess our director of marketing communication started back in the first week of April. So other than that, I have a, we have a team of four, but I was really kind of in a league of my own, just doing everything. And, you know, our SVP trusted me enough to, you know, do it and run with it. So we kind of tier our platforms, like Instagram is our number one, TikTok would be number two, Facebook mix is in there just because we do have such a loyal kind of following on Facebook. But um, my whole thing is like, don't fix it if it's not broken. Um, so for Instagram, like 
we post our recipes, we post products, we post really kind of like not as authentic as you would be on TikTok, but um, really just kind of what is working. Like I'm not, I, to me, there's no true science to it. You've got to post and test and learn, but um, if it's working, I'm not going to change it. So, you know, we have some great recipes that we throw up there and just some informative stuff. I'll try and make like that. I always use like that Spotify, like top five performed so well for us. I made it in like 10 minutes last year. It's not even that good. I was like embarrassed it went up, but I was like, it's doing so well. I have to leave it. So um, really just kind of like being ready, knowing it's one of those jobs that like you can't take off, like you can, but you can't. Um, going to TikTok, like I mentioned earlier, we started with a TikTok intern on Tuesday and I already feel that there's like such a difference that's going to happen. And, you know, um, she posted, like, she like made like 14 videos in a day. And I was like, that's insane. And they're all good. And they're also like authentic, like looking. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's such a good outlet for that. And I just, as a team of four, you know, Lauren is in California. I'm here. We make all these videos. I have so many. It's just kind of making sure they fit in the right spot. Um, I think it's like a, a weakness and a strength of mine. Like if it's not fitting and I don't think it's going to perform, I don't want it. I don't want it up there. You know, like I don't want to fail. And I, you know, we fail as a team and we grow as a team. So I um, am very specific about like what goes on to our feed and what we're sharing with the consumer. So I would say just like between the two of them, knowing that TikTok could be more authentic, more chill, more laxed. Um, and Instagram is kind of like our prized child. Um, but going into the back half of the year, we are going to prioritize TikTok a bit more. Lauren is working with um, a content creator out in LA to kind of fit those mixed, like those empty holes between our TikTok intern and, you know, the, the actual entrepreneur, the, the name on the brand. So uh, making sure she still kind of lives within. Yeah, that's so fun. I'm excited to see how you guys develop and grow on that platform. And I'm sure it's exciting for you guys to kind of see the fruits of your labor come together in real time, really. So uh, congrats on kind of launching more into that space. It's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. So we want to do something with you that is one of our favorite activities here on the show. Uh, so essentially, I'm going to name a platform. And then if you can share kind of your rapid fire top tip for that platform, uh, we'd love to hear what your responses are. So are you ready? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So how about Instagram to start? Um, listen to the consumer and don't fix it if it's not broken. <laughs> And then so far with your learnings on TikTok, what do you see in there? Um, be authentic, but don't force yourself into a place you don't fit. You know, not everyone has to follow every single trend. It's not always worth it. Yeah, great advice. And then how about Facebook? Um, be simple and direct. Uh, there's people aren't really there to mess around. They want answers and they really want them quickly. Yeah. And then Pinterest? Keywords. I just started working with like almost a Pinterest coach and the keywords are the key to success on Pinterest. Yeah. We're excited to dive more into Pinterest. We don't talk about that platform enough there. So excited to learn more there. And then last but not least, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Um, post your wins and post frequently um, and make sure your whole team is bought in. We've actually had really great LinkedIn growth recently and the whole team is bought into it and it's really been super successful. That's awesome. We love LinkedIn. It's literally our favorite platform. I feel like we've talked everyone's ear off about LinkedIn over the years, but uh, it's really cool to hear that the brand is doing really well on that platform too. But um, I'm curious to hear too, what are your predictions for like social media in the back half of 2024 as we're like approaching the end of the year, which seems so crazy to me. I feel like it was just January. So yeah, uh, what do you think in there? I feel like this is like almost a hot take, but I do think images are going to come back. I think people want something more low maintenance um, than a video. Not everyone is comfortable doing videos. They're like, I personally, like I would rather have my picture taken than, you know, have to perform for a video. Um, yeah. All those fun like digital cameras are coming back. I feel like the Polaroids, the little digitals we've had. I mean, I use one, I paid a hundred dollars for it and I carry around a $1,500 iPhone and I'm like, this is better. So I just think <laughs> it's like the, the easiness of it and the, um, the quickness. I think it, you're going to be able to be more authentic in a picture than these videos. I feel like people almost put a persona on. 
to take mm -hmm. a video? It's hard to say, but then there was that small stint of time where on TikTok, the photos perform better than the videos. So yeah. we're like trying to get back there, but using video heavy platforms. So I think it's going to come back. I think, you know, carousels are going to shine back through and we want to yeah. be more in the image world. Oh my gosh. I love that photo dumps and back to the era of like 90 plus photos in a Facebook album. Like let's yeah. go back there. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I feel like everything comes back around and it's time we just bring back static images. <laughs> oh my gosh. I still remember when I was like in middle school, I don't think I ever went anywhere without my digital camera wrapped around my yeah. wrist. You know, they had those like- That's me now in 2024. <laughs> like I love that thing. We went to a team retreat last week and I was like, all right, everybody. Like, and they're like, what is that? I'm like, oh, yeah, my camera. <laughs> that's amazing. Maybe we'll go back to like MySpace era. Maybe that's where we're going. We're just like retro going back there. But and Blackberries um, too. <laughs> oh, Blackberries. Yeah, I forgot about them. Never did those know. Take yeah. pictures. Oh, did I'm ready for take both. Photos? Give me, give me a Blackberry oh, no. and give me a MySpace. I'm yeah. ready. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, other than those two new products coming out, is there anything exciting coming up for Sweet Lauren's that you want to share? Maybe like, a, I don't know, a new retailer or like a, an activation or anything along those lines? I don't know if you're even able to share that, but if there's anything, let us know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the one that, you know, breaks the news that we might not be able to share. We are launching a podcast okay. in the fall um, for, you know, the holiday season that is, that has been talked about. So we can say that, but um, there, like I said, a, a few times, there's so much new coming um, yeah. and it's, it's really, it's just not going to stop for like, yeah, at least the next year and a half until we, you know, more things just pop up, but um, yeah, our puff pastry, our pizza, they're going to really take us through the rest of the year. It's going to be awesome. Oh, that's so great. We can't wait to try those out ourselves and can't wait to just stay tuned with Sweet Lawrence and also just you personally and see uh, what's going on uh, with you guys. And speaking of, would love to know where we can stay in touch with you personally and also Sweet Lawrence online. Yeah. Um, my, so this is my stage name is Alyssa, um, but my personal and my personal life, I'm Allie. So my Instagram is Allie March, but always, you know, feel free to follow. Like I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I am the voice behind most of our social media. So I'm there and willing to talk on Sweet Lawrence too. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and passing along your strategies and just sharing your story with us. It was so fun to, to hear from you and get to know you. So thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Marketing Happy Hour podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. If you want more of Marketing Happy Hour but don't know where to start, we invite you to download our free Marketing Happy Hour starter kit at marketinghappyhr.com forward slash starter dash kit. This interactive magazine style PDF walks through who we are, includes helpful resources like a marketing term glossary and the printable daily planner sheet that we actually use ourselves and contains clickable links to our episode recommendations by subject area. Not to mention all the fun extras like a quiz, the link to our Marketing Happy Hour Insiders Facebook group, a word search, a playlist, a goal setting guide, content inspo by month, and more. It's our hope that you'll dive into this resource and walk away more confident in your career journey with a group of industry pals that you can lean on for advice and support. Snag your free starter kit today at marketinghappyhr.com forward slash starter kit for all of the info you need to become a Marketing Happy Hour Insider.